Tonight on Denver 7 News at 6. Between the fog and the darkness, we didn't know what we were about to find, but we knew it had already happened. A deputy walks into a hail of gunfire and lives to tell the tale. We went as fast as we could get there. He's fighting for his life in a ditch. How an ambitious plan to reform health care became a collection of half measures. This is a completely different bill, a completely different concept than what was introduced. Coronavirus outbreaks explode in Colorado schools. And how to navigate our new underground highway. It's more like a tunnel scenario uh, down under that. Good evening. Thank you for choosing Denver 7 tonight. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jessica Porter. We begin tonight on the Eastern Plains, where a deputy was shot several times today after interrupting a theft. The deputy survived but was badly hurt. The man who shot him was later found dead. Investigators say he killed himself. Denver 7's Lance Hernandez live in Lincoln County tonight. Lance, uh, the sheriff says the deputy was shot within seconds of stepping out of his car. He says it was an ambush, one that the deputy was fortunate to survive. Now, Deputy Michael Hutton was responding to a 911 call on a truck break in near the I-70 Highway 287 interchange. As Hutton rounded the back of the truck, shots rang out. He managed to stay on his feet and was able to back up a bit. Hutton now recuperating at a hospital in Denver. Now, Captain Michael Yowell says those first few hours this morning in thick fog were very stressful but I struggled to find the word that we lived for those few hours trying to figure out if, if Mike was okay. Scared, and if anybody tells you any different, they're wrong. No info has been released on the suspect yet. It will be up to the Lincoln County Coroner to make a positive ID. Reporting live in the Hugo area, Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. Lance, thank you. Denver police shot a man Wednesday night after they say he threatened them with a knife. The department announced today the man has since died. Police came across him while investigating a report of a stabbing at Federal and Harvard. Officers say they tried a pepper ball and then a taser, but he kept coming toward them, so an officer fired, killing him. A former Loveland police officer appeared before a judge today as a suspect. Austin Hopp is accused of assaulting Karen Gardner, a 73-year-old woman with dementia. His charges are felonies. Daria Jalali was briefly booked in jail today because she did nothing to stop the assault and for failing to tell her superiors. Her charges are misdemeanors. And a third officer involved in the arrest and its aftermath resigned but was not charged. DU Law Professor Ian Farrell says that, along with Jalali escaping more serious charges, is indicative of a double standard. I think these DAs, uh, DAs in Colorado, um, for the most part, would have, if this was an ordinary citizen and not a police officer or police officers, charge everything they could possibly think of, right? If you imagine like um, two or three people coming up on a 73 year old woman with dementia and breaking her arm and dislocating her shoulder and, and holding her um, against her will for several hours and refusing to give her medical care, you charge them with everything you could think of. We asked Farrell if he thinks these prosecutions will end in plea deals. He said that is a strong possibility unless the DA feels pressure to take this to trial. Governor Polis is urging Denver Pride to reconsider excluding police from this year's event. The governor's office tells Denver 7 that excluding police means excluding members of the LGBTQ community who work in law enforcement. Pride Fest says it values its relationship with law enforcement, but that it must take a stand against police violence. Fort Lupton police safely disarmed a student of a very realistic airsoft gun this week. This could have ended a lot differently. It, it's as hard on police as anyone else to tell the difference between a toy and a threat. So please don't remove the orange tips and put police in an even more difficult situation. Mm. Well, Jeffco deputies say engine problems likely were to blame for this emergency landing near Westminster Hills Dog Park this afternoon. No one was hurt. The Democrats had such great expectations for health care reform, and with each passing day, it becomes clear those expectations will not be met. We knew this bill was a goner the moment hospitals and insurers said they'd stop fighting it. This wasn't a compromise. This was an ad campaign paying off and an industry getting what it wanted. And it gets worse. After the bill was gutted, lawmakers decided to make even more revisions. So here with an attempt to explain the new, totally incomprehensible version, it's Denver 7's Megan Lopez. If there's one word to describe the effort to lower medical insurance costs in Colorado through a public option bill, it's confusing. Confusing for lawmakers. I'm not even sure what to say because this has been, this has been a difficult bill 
to keep up with because we've made a lot of changes. Confusing for businesses. Everybody has questions about what this will look like. Even confusing for healthcare experts. It's trying to bottle lightning in the way it changes so much. Confusing because of the broad change it promises and all the changes the bill itself has undergone. This is a big shift um, that was worked on as uh, over a period of two months. Dozens of amendments proposed, many failed, but some passed, including a complete rewrite. This is a completely different bill, a completely different concept than what was introduced. The biggest change, this bill really isn't a public option. Instead of the government setting up its own health insurance to compete for lower prices, private insurers would run it. It just introduces a lot more complexity into this already complex system we have in America. Joe Hanel from the Colorado Health Institute says this latest iteration of the bill is more complicated now, but less of a departure from our current health care system, which in itself is plenty confusing. It's less disruptive to the way the system is right now, but it still really looks to achieve some some price reductions. The bill only affects a small fraction of Coloradans who get their medical insurance from the individual or small group marketplace. Opponents say it just isn't ready. With the amount of concerns that we've seen, the number of you know changes, amendments, the strike below that we've seen to that bill, I do think it sends a message that there's more work to do here. What exactly is this if it isn't a public option? And realistically, how is it going to save our citizens any money? In a committee hearing Wednesday, even fellow Democrats had their doubts. I really appreciate the merit and the intent of this bill, but I really do believe that it's sending the wrong message at the wrong time. And I still feel like we have a lot of work to do. Still, bill sponsors say this will accomplish its goal, just with a different approach. The Colorado option will decrease costs by 18% in the individual and small group market over a three-year period, while making sure that those counties that don't have health care options, that we put another insurance option out there for people to choose from. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. As of tomorrow... Masks are optional at Coors Field. The Rockies will continue to encourage masks for people not fully vaccinated. Now, as a reminder, fully vaccinated means it's been two weeks since your second dose of Pfizer or Moderna or two weeks after receiving that single dose from Johnson & Johnson. Get your shots during summer vacation, kids, because more than 270 schools are reporting outbreaks of coronavirus. 13 were confirmed in just the last week. Those are Wildler Elementary and Falcon Bluffs Middle in Littleton, Two Roads Charter and Faith Christian in Arvada, South Park High in Fair Play, Murphy Creek and Jewel Elementary in Aurora, Louisville Middle, Heritage Christian in Fort Collins, Great Work Montessori in Lakewood, Grand Junction High School, Bradley International in Denver, and a DPS bus terminal on Dallas Street. 11% of Coloradans 12 to 15 years old have already received one dose of the vaccine. And in just a very few minutes, I'm going to sit down with Governor Polis and leaders from the State Health Department for a town hall conversation on vaccines and children. This discussion will begin right after this show ends, so I do hope you'll stick around and join us for that. It's almost showtime for CDOT. Tomorrow night, they'll close I-70 between 25 and 270 for the weekend. When they reopen it Monday, the old viaduct will be obsolete and an underground highway will have taken its place. Here to help navigate us is human GPS Jason Luber. The majority of the lowered section is this open air. You know, we've got walls on both sides, but there is open air to the top. However, the cover that thousand feet does have it's more like a tunnel scenario uh, down under that. Only half of the lowered section is done, but all of the traffic is moving. Officials say there's room for both directions of I-70 traffic. We will have slightly narrowed lanes. The lanes will be 11 feet wide. We'll have three of them, so that is our commitment. We are not reducing any capacity for I-70. Drivers will be in a head-to-head -head configuration for 14 months while the viaduct is demolished and the eastbound tunnel is built. A new change that drivers will have to deal with is sun glare. How high will the center divider be when uh, you're up in this area? Yeah, so it, it's standard guardrail height with okay. a glare screen on it. So, so we're adding the 18-inch glare screen to help protect. When the second tunnel opens, the lanes on both sides will be the standard 12 feet wide and shoulders will be 8 to 10 feet wide. But in the meantime, if you break down or have a crash, you may get pushed to one of the emergency pullouts that CDOT says will be every half a mile. I-70 between Washington and I-270 will also be closed this weekend because of the shift. You can watch more of Jason's reports on the Central 70 Project on Denver 7 Plus. 
toasty temperatures right now. I'll let you know if this warm weather will last through Sunday. Cancer took a Colorado woman's footing. State-of-the-art technology is helping her find it again. That story when we return. I've always been a grateful person, but I've had actually a lot more gratitude since all this. Get live 24-7 news, weather, and more anytime you want with Denver 7 Plus, and it's all free. Denver 7 Plus is local news whenever you want. It's always on, even when other local newscasts aren't. Plus, watch Denver 7 weather 24-7. It's like having a weather station in your home. It's local news, plus weather, plus entertainment, plus more, and it's all free. Denver 7 Plus, you're in control.